Hi, my name is Melissa Shilongo and I'm here with Dustin Hot Yoga and I'm here to spend a few moments uh, talking about our posture of the week which is Eka Pada Raja Kapotasana, Pigeon Pose, which I know some people have a love-hate relationship with. It's a great hip opener, um, especially as women, we tend to carry a lot of stuff in our hips. Anytime we think we're sweeping something under the proverbial rug, um, for us women, it goes right to our hips. Um, men too, I'm sure, I uh, can't speak to that, but um, I'm gonna guide you safely into that posture. One thing I will mention, um, if you've got knee injuries, there's a modification that I'll show at the end. Um, but I like to approach this posture from downward dog, from Adho Mukha Svanasana. So I'll come into that posture now. <clears throat> a block is a good thing to have handy. I'm sorry, a blanket or a block. And then when I'm in downward dog, or Adho Mukha Svanasana, I'm going to inhale my right leg up and back. And then on my exhale, I'm going to draw my right knee towards my wrist, towards my right wrist. And then your knee will typically dictate what this front shin is going to look like, whether it's parallel to the short edge of your mat or more at an angle. Again, you know, the tightness in your hips will also come into play there. I like to keep a little action in my right foot. I call it a floint, where I'm kind of pointing and flexing my foot, kind of digging my pinky toe into the mat, and that just keeps a little action there to firm up the outer and inner ankle. Again, just to protect this front knee. I'm gonna make sure that my hips are squared off towards the front of the mat, and I keep my toes curled under, at least while I'm approaching this posture. And then from this place, when my hips are nice and level, I begin to sink into the mat. And this is where you might consider placing a blanket. If your right hip is not firmly planted on the mat, you can give yourself a little assist there and place a blanket. Um, I don't need it, I just taught, taught a class, so I should be pretty open. And then from this place, you can choose to surrender, right? So we're not collapsing, but we're, we're moving slowly into a fold here. And I'm just resisting gravity as I fold into this over, over my legs. And again, if you want more energy here to make this more energetic for someone who might be a little more flexible, you can start to energetically draw your left hip towards the mat. And that's just gonna, again, intensify the stretch in your back hip and, and outer glute. Um, and then spend a few moments here, breathing fully, sending your breath to the tight places. And then something I always like to do when I come out of this posture is if I've uncurled my back toes, I wanna to curl those under again, and then find some engagement in my bottom half, activating Mula Bandha. So I'm lifting my pelvic floor, I'm drawing my navel in here, narrowing my hip points, and then I come into what I like to call a proud pigeon. So I'm taking my shoulder heads back, I'm shining my heart and sternum forward, coming into a front extension or a back bend here, so that engagement in my bottom half is protecting my lower back. And then I'll just take my gaze over my right shoulder, see what's back there, over my left, and then come out of this, again, mindfully with integrity. One of my favorite ways to leave, to exit this posture, is to, again, with the back toes curled under, lift from my belly, draw my navel in, come into a three-legged dog here with that same leg lifted, and then counter stretch it, stacking my hips. So for those of you who might not who this posture might not be accessible for if, you've had, if you have a knee injury. Another way to get the same benefits of that stretch would be to lie supine on your back. And then I'll do my same leg, so it's my right knee that's gonna bend. And I'll stack my right ankle right on top of my left thigh. I'm gonna keep that right foot flexed, again, just to protect my knee. And then I'm gonna lift that left foot off of the mat. Try to interlace my fingers behind my left thigh. And then gently draw my legs in here. And again, I'm gonna do my best here to soften my upper body, my face, my shoulders, my neck. And you can even think about, too, the placement of your pelvis here. Make sure that the natural curves in your spine are still there. You can also use a strap here if, you're, if you weren't quite as flexible as me. And if interlacing your fingers behind your thigh, kind of causes you to look like this where you're straining your upper body, that's when a strap is handy. And you can use a strap to just lengthen your arms and then allow your upper body to, 
to rest. So that again, we're truly isolating the stretch in our outer hip area and glute. Hmm. And that's it for Ekapada Raja Kapotasana. Again, it's a lovely posture, a catalyst for movement, for release. If you're carrying tension, not just in those obvious places like your neck and your shoulders, but, but in your hips. So again, my name is Melissa Shalanga. I'm with Destin Hot Yoga, and that's our posture of the week. Ekapada Raja Kapotasana, Pigeon Pose.